welcome students this is the first lecture on the introduction of the welding uh, this is a series of lectures uh, 12 lectures on on the welding so we'll first talk about uh, the manufacturing processes uh, which uh, are basically used for shaping the materials as per size and uh, the shape required for uh, making the engineering components there are four manufacturing methods commonly used for shaping the engineering components and uh, these four manufacturing methods are the casting which comes in zero process category machining uh, forming which comes under the zero process category again uh, then machining negative process and the welding positive process uh, this classification is based on the way by which material is processed uh, to get the desired shape uh, these methods are based on the different uh, principles of shaping metals uh, like casting and forming involves control shifting of the metals to get the desired size and shape of the product and hence these are termed as zero processes in these two processes no addition or deletion of the material takes place uh, mainly shifting of the material from one region to another is used to get the desired size and shape the first process say here is uh, the forming in which uh, 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 thick greater thickness uh, strip is uh, reduced to the smaller thickness like this one when it is passed through the rollers so in uh, forming this is termed as a rolling process basically used to reduce the thickness and increase the length uh, the volume of the material largely uh, shame same and uh, only shifting of the material from one region to another region takes place uh, the casting is another process where the raw material is brought to the molten state in the furnace and then that molten metal is placed into the mold to get the desired shape like this disc so theoretically there is no uh, loss in both these processes only the shifting of the material from one region to another region is used to get the desired size and shape uh, machining is uh, the another uh, fabrication technique in which uh, uh, this is considered as a negative process because unwanted material from the raw material or from the bulk material is uh, removed in form of uh, small chips for getting the desired shape of the metals uh, here the material say this is a tool and this is the material being turned or uh, turned uh, and a uh, material is removed in form of uh, chips to get uh, the final shape of this type uh, unwanted extra material has been removed in this case that's why uh, these processes the processes uh, in machining machining processes are considered as uh, negative processes on the other hand welding processes in which uh, uh, addition of the material is frequently used to get the desired size and shape these processes in manufacturing are frequently uh, used to join the simple shape components to get the desired product uh, hence these pro joining processes are called positive processes uh, three joining techniques are commonly used in engineering applications such as the mechanical joints where nut bolts clamps and rivets are used adhesives in which epoxy resins and fevicol is used and welding and allied processes which includes the welding brazing and soldering in welding based processes here the simple shape components are joined using the fillet belts like this here t kind of the joint is formed and here fillet belts uh, uh, are used where two overlapping plates are joined in in technical terms this is termed as a, a lap joint 
uh, the selection of the joint uh, uh, depends on, on the various factors means before going for selection of a particular joint some of the factors should be considered first. This includes the type of the joint which is required for a given engineering application whether the joint is required for uh, the temporarily uh, joint is required temporarily or uh, it is uh, required in permanent way. So, if the permanent joints are required then welding based processes are selected and if the temporary joint is required then the nut and bolts kind of uh, the joints are joining techniques are used. The metal to be joined uh, uh, includes like uh, um, steel, cast iron, aluminum, dissimilar metals or any other combination. Some of the metals are easy to weld, so, but uh, there is another category uh, which impose significant difficulty in, in joining by welding. So, um, if the dissimilar combinations are particularly uh, to be joined uh, like aluminum with the, uh, steel or aluminum with the cast iron or al copper with aluminum, uh, then uh, welding simple uh, welding processes uh, uh, are not found suitable. Uh, in that case mechanical or uh, other uh, joining mechanical joints or adhesive joints can be used and a lot of work is going on in the area of the dissimilar metal joining by the fusion welding based processes. Uh, the selection of the joint uh, uh, should also uh, in, in the selection of the joint uh, it is required to consider the temperature conditions, the corrosion environment, uh, the nature of the load and the reliability required for a given service before considering um, the type of the joint. Uh, here the requirement of service like temperature some of uh, the joints uh, behaves uh, in very undesired manner like very low toughness is noticed in, in the welded joints and uh, they perform poorly also in the corrosive environment. So, the selection of the type of the joint select whether it will be the welded joint, braced joint soldered joint or uh, mechanical joint, adhesive joint all that will uh, uh, depend on the service conditions which are uh, under which uh, the joints are to be used. Like uh, uh, the, if the load is light soldered joints can also work at low temperature or room temperature conditions, uh, but if the load is severe very high loading conditions are there at high temperature then brazing and soldering will not be effective and one should go for um, some uh, wel welded joints rather than braced or soldered joints. In the same way if the environment is chemical and corrosion, corrosive environment is there then uh, adhesive joints may also not be suitable. Uh, in the last uh, it is also last but not least it is also important to see the, uh, the economical aspects because the purpose of uh, engineering in any form is to uh, complete the activities with the minimum use of resources. So, such a joint which can perform uh, the desired function and can be produced at low cost uh, should be selected. So, that that is what is the role of uh, the economy the joint which can perform a desired function and can be produced economically should be selected. Welding is different from other uh, manufacturing techniques in number of ways. Uh, like uh, the welding is considered as a positive process because addition of the metals uh, is used to get the desired size and shape. Uh, the very undesirable aspect of the welding is the development of the residual stresses in weld metal and the heat affected zone. Uh, the, uh, many times the in the weld metal and in the heat affected zone tensile uh, residual stresses are developed which adversely affect the tensile strength of the weldment. If somehow uh, the compressive residual stresses are developed in the weldment then those help in improving the fatigue resistance of the, met of the metal. 
uh, otherwise uh, the, uh, the presence of the tensile residual stresses adversely affects the tensile uh, and uh, fatigue properties of the workpiece. Residual stresses are those stresses which are present in, in the metal whether it is HAZ or heat, heat affected zone uh, without uh, any external load. These are uh, developed because of locked in strain in the uh, heat affected zone particularly in the welded joints. Uh, in the uh, welding uh, we uh, use the heat pressure either individually or both. There uh, we have different categories of the welding processes in which, in which uh, only heat is used and there is another category of the welding processes in which only pressure is used. Some of the welding processes involves the use of uh, both pressure and heat. Uh, the partial melting of the base metal is the very special nature related to the welding uh, manufacturing techniques while in other uh, fabrication techniques like uh, machining or forming no melting takes place while in casting complete melting of the base metal is used to get the desired size and shape. The weld thermal cycle which is encountered by the base metal during the welding is known to affect uh, the base metal properties particularly the region which is affected due to the weld thermal cycle is known as heat affected zone and that many times leads to the softening or hardening of the heat affected zone. So, that is why efforts are always made to reduce the effect of weld thermal cycle. Uh, it is common to uh, see that uh, the discontinuities are found in, in the welded joints and uh, the, the joint also shows the anisotropy and isotropy in terms of the composition properties of the weld joint and uh, the heat affected zone. Uh, the, the variation in the mechanical properties and the microstructural characteristics in the weld metal and heat affected zone uh, leads to uh, the poor reliability or, of the heat affected joint. Uh, there are few other points related to the dissimilarities in, in the welding compared to the other fabrication processes like poor reliability of the joint compared to the other uh, manufacturing techniques. The component produced by the welding uh, used uh, are known to have poor reliability compared to those produced by the forming or the casting processes. Uh, wastage of the material uh, is also there uh, in form of spatter in run in portion and run off portion which uh, this run and run in and run off portion needs to be removed uh, before uh, obtaining the uh, uh, final component for engineering ap application. Uh, the process capabilities, the capability of the welding process is somewhat poor in terms of uh, the accuracy, precision and the surface, surface finish that we get. Many times it is required to go for post machining uh, operations to get the desired size and shape accurately. Uh, the need uh, of the post uh, weld treatment such as uh, uh, the heat treatment and mechanical working is uh, required to get the desired properties. The mechanical properties such as hardness, good yield strength and uh, hardness um, uh, are uh, frequently obtained by the post weld treatment operations like normalizing which helps to refine the grain structure. At the same time residual stresses are also relieved uh, by in the heat treatment uh, operation like annealing or stress relieving operations. If the material uh, is work hardened mechanically by mechanical uh, working techniques like rolling that helps to obtain uniformity in, in the uh, properties of the heat affected zone and in the weld metal. Uh, the problems related to the welding also cause the ductile to brittle transition behavior of, uh, of uh, some of the metals like uh, 
The mild steel weld joints which uh, show significant ductility at room temperature becomes so brittle at a low temperature say about minus 10 to minus 20 degree centigrade temperature conditions. So, the weldability of the mild steel for room temperature application considered good while at uh, uh, for uh, uh, the low temperature applications below minus 10 or minus 20 degree centigrade the weldability, weldability, the weldability of the steel is considered poor. Now, uh, we will see that how the wood different welding process were developed uh, right from the beginning. The first application of the welding with the carbon electrodes started in 1885 and then metal arc welding with bare electrode was carried out in 1890. A resistance welding process was developed in 1886. Uh, spot and flash welding processes which were controlled manually were developed in 1905. Uh, uh, oxygen clean welding was developed in uh, 1903. Uh, thermite welding processes which is even used nowadays for welding of the rail joints was developed in uh, 1903. A uh, submerged arc welding with coated electrodes which is mostly used for the general applications even nowadays uh, was developed in, in 1907. Cellulosic electrode welding was uh, electrodes for the welding applications was were developed in, in 1918. Uh, arc stud welding process was developed in 19. 18, a seam welding of the tubes process was developed in 1922. Uh, mechanical flash welding for joining rails was developed in 1924. Extruded coatings for manual metal arc welding electrodes were developed in 1926. Submerged arc welding process was developed in 1935. Air arc gouging process was developed in 1939. Uh, inert gas tungsten arc welding, more commonly known as TIG welding, was developed in 1941. Iron powder electrodes with high recovery were developed in 1944. Uh, inert gas metal arc welding process uh, was developed in 1948. This process is of great significance from the high deposition rate point of view for the commercial applications. Uh, electro slag welding which is used for very thick seats uh, welding like in uh, ship uh, building industry uh, was developed in 1951. A flux cord wire uh, with a CO2 sealed, sealing gas was uh, developed in 1954. Uh, electron beam welding was developed in 1954 and uh, constricted arc plasma for cutting applications was developed in 1955. A friction welding process, a lot of work is being done on this process even nowadays initially was developed in nine, uh, 1956. Uh, plasma arc welding was developed 1957. Electron gas, uh, electro gas welding was developed in 1957. A short circuit transfer for low current, low voltage welding with CO2 was developed 1957. And vacuum diffusion welding process was developed in 1959. Explosive welding process which is normally used for uh, the difficult to weld metals or the dissimilar combinations was developed in 1960. A laser beam welding process was developed in 1961 and a high power CO2 laser beam welding process was developed in 1964. In the welding processes, uh, uh, 
uh, normally heat source is used for uh, joining purpose uh, and the joints are produced uh, normally by fusion of the base metal and the heat source for uh, the different fusion welding processes are found different like in gas welding it is the gas flame which is used um, arc uh, in arc welding process and uh, the um, high energy beam uh, like uh, electron beam or lasers are used in, in uh, uh, high energy beam based welding processes. Uh, for same power of the heat source for different welding processes energy density is found different uh, because energy density is governed by the area over which heat is applied. The energy density increases from gas welding to the arc welding and then further higher energy density is obtained in the high energy beam welding processes. Uh, an increase in power density of the welding process decreases with decreases the heat input required for the welding. Uh, energy density uh, depends upon the area over which heat is being applied. Uh, smaller the area over which heat is applied, higher the energy density is obtained. If the power density of a welding process is high, then it needs lesser amount of the heat input for uh, melting uh, the base metals and uh, producing a joint. And that is why it is said that an increase in power density of the welding process decreases the heat input required for welding. Uh, the fusion welding processes are uh, based on the localized melting using the high energy high density heat energy uh, because high energy uh, high density heat energy is uh, important because um, the heat is applied in localized manner at the fine surfaces to get uh, the uh, partial molten condition of the metal to be joined. To ensure the melting of the base metal in less time, it is necessary that the energy density of the welding process is high enough. If the energy density is not high enough of a welding process, then whatever heat is uh, supplied that is transferred away from the fine surfaces and material is not brought to the molten state. The time to melt the base metal is uh, found inversely proportional to the power uh, density of the heat source being used that is the power of the arc or flame divided by the area of the workpiece over which heat is applied and it is normally expressed in terms of watt per centimeter square. Lower the energy density of the heat source greater uh, will be the heat input required for the welding as large amount of heat is dissipated to bulk of the workpiece from the fine surfaces by thermal conduction. So, if the heat energy density is low, then lot of heat is to be supplied to bring the fine surfaces to the molten condition and uh, it takes longer time also to, uh, to bring uh, the uh, fine surfaces in molten condition because lot of heat is dissipated to the bulk of uh, bulk material of the workpiece. The power density uh, the power density heat input affects uh, the mechanical properties both these characteristics the power density at heat and the heat input affects the work material properties particularly in the heat affected zone. If the energy density is high heat input will be low and effect on the work piece material will also be less. But if the power density is low then heat input will be high and uh, and uh, there will be a more effect on the work material properties uh, of the weld joints. And the excessive heat input may damage the base metal in terms of the distortion, shortening, oblique hardening and the re reduced mechanical properties. High heat input 
uh, adversely affects the joint performance in general and it has been observed that increase in heat input increases the distortion related problems, more effect on the heat affected zone properties like either hardening or the softening is noticed and adversely affects the joint properties, well metal properties itself. Uh, so, that effect you can see here if the energy density is high here in this diagram it has been shown is schematically if the energy density is high for a given amount of heat it takes less time while low, low energy density process takes longer time to provide the same amount of heat. Uh, the heat input uh, which is required for uh, uh, bringing the uh, metal to the molten condition if it is determined by uh, the base metal itself first if the heat input has been obtained then heat input required for melting the base metal uh, is found uh, equal to the energy density multiplied by the time. Uh, higher the energy density lower is the time required to melt the metal and to produce the joint and lower the energy density longer is the time required for, uh, for bringing the metal to the molten condition to produce the joint. Uh, effect of uh, the heat input on the weldment performance can be seen from this diagram power density of the heat source on the on this axis uh, and uh, the ordinates you can see the heat input to the work piece. Uh, lower the energy density, lower the power density, higher the heat input required for producing the weld joint. Low power density welding process like gas welding needs the higher heat input for producing the joint. Uh, somewhat uh, higher power density heat source like arc welding process the heat input required for producing the weld, weld joint uh, uh, reduces and uh, for further higher energy density for power density heat source like in high energy uh, beam welding for example, laser beam or electron beam welding heat input required for uh, welding uh, of the metals further reduces. So, if uh, you can see here. Uh, higher the, um, the power density of the heat source uh, in higher the uh, higher the power density of the heat source lower the heat input required for producing the joint lower the power density higher the heat input and uh, the effect of the heat input can be seen that if the heat input uh, to the workpiece increases then it leads to the increased damage to the workpiece in terms of the mechanical properties, distortion, residual stresses etcetera. On the other hand, if the power density is high heat input will be reduced and that in turn will give the advantages like increased penetration, high welding speed, high weld quality and uh, but the equipment cost is also high in this side. So, this uh, way we can see the power density of uh, the heat source significantly affects the performance of uh, the welding process and uh, the weld joint performance both. Uh, uh, just for example, uh, we can see here the effect of heat input on the angular distortion uh, with the increase in thickness of the plates welded by the low energy density welding process and high energy density welding process like electron beam. So, if we compare these uh, two welding process one of the low uh, energy density welding process like gas tungsten arc welding with the high energy density welding process like electron beam welding. Uh, the angular distortion which is noticed is uh, increases continuously with the increase in thickness of the uh, the plates in case of the GTA gas tungsten arc welding while in case of high energy density processes there is no significant increase uh, largely it decreases uh, uh, with, with the increase in thickness. So, means if the higher thickness plates are to be welded 
then uh, electron beam welding process would be more suitable compared to the GTA welding process as it leads to the distortion, uh, angular distortion and uh, that angular distortion could be understood easily from this schematic diagram. Here it is required that after, uh, after, uh, after welding both these plates will, will remain in line and, uh, the, uh, and here the joint is produced. But sometimes what happens that uh, if the heat due to the weld thermal cycle encountered by the base metals during the welding uh, angular distortion uh, takes place and because of that uh, the, the, the two plates bend uh, um, about the axis uh, of, of the about the weld center line. But this angular distortion effect is less in case of high energy density welding process like electron beam welding and it is, uh, uh, it is more uh, in case of the gas tungsten arc welding process. Uh, effect of heat input on the strength of the weld joint, we will see that how it affects, how heat input affects the strength of the weld joint. Uh, here you can see that if we uh, consider these three alloys, uh, aluminum alloys, means aluminum, copper, aluminum, magnesium, silicon, and another aluminum, magnesium, can, magnesium, silicon alloys, then uh, uh, with the increase in heat input in all the cases, uh, reduction in tensile strength takes place. And it is uh, uh, normally attributed uh, to the effect of the heat input on the microstructural characteristics which are produced in the weld joints. Like the low heat input uh, leads to the very fine grain structure in, in the weld metal compared to uh, the weld joints produced by using uh, high heat input. Here in this microstructure we can see that alpha aluminum light edged white uh, grains uh, are very coarse compared to uh, the case when weld joint is produced using low heat input. And this, uh, this uh, microstructural difference is attributed uh, to uh, the reduction in the mechanical uh, tensile strength um, with the increase in heat input uh, of the aluminum alloys. The similar reduction in, in the strength of the weld joint of the steels and other metals also noticed. Uh, the energy density uh, effect on, on the welding, we will see that high heat input has been reported to lower the many uh, tensile strength of the many aluminum alloys of the commercial importance. Well, the use of high energy density offers the advantages such as deep penetration, high welding speed and improved quality of the weld joints. Uh, the welding process where melting is required like in all fusion welding processes, the power density should be more than 10 watt per centimeter square. So, as to get the um, uh, faint surfaces in molten condition and to produce the joint. Uh, vaporization of the metal takes place at about uh, 10,000 watt per centimeter square power density and uh, this high power density is normally obtained in the radiation based processes like electron beam or laser beam welding processes where energy density such a high energy density is used to um, used for controlled removal of the metal for shaping of difficult to machine metals. Uh, a comparison of the different welding processes in terms of the power density and the temperature can be seen here. The gas welding is considered a low uh, is considered as low power density process. Uh, it is a power density is uh, around 10 watt per centimeter square and maximum temperature which is generated is 3300 degrees centigrade. In arc welding process it is about 50 watt per centimeter square power density and the temperature is 6000 about 6000 degree centigrade. Resistance welding processes offer further higher power density around 1000 watt per centimeter square and the temperature is varying right from the interface to the electrode contact surfaces and uh, the laser beam welding process offers further higher power density 
to the tune of 9000 uh, watt per centimeter square and um, um, the temperature is also significantly high around 20000 degree centigrade and uh, electron beam welding process for the offers the high power density around 10000 watt per centimeter square and temperature maximum temperature which is generated in this welding process is around 30000 degree centigrade. Uh, these uh, uh, welding processes in terms of the power density can also be compared here uh, and uh, it can be seen that uh, the, uh, the gas um, welding uh, is the lowest power density welding process and the highest one um, are the laser beam and electron beam welding processes while uh, the manual metal arc wel welding, plasma welding and uh, MIG welding uh, process comes in between. Melting of the fine surfaces is important in uh, fusion welding processes. The fine surfaces of the base metal should uh, melt before the melting of the filler metal or electrode metal in order to ensure good bonding and penetration. Otherwise, base metal surface will freeze out the filler metal quickly due to the chilling effect. To have proper bonding, it is necessary that uh, the base metal melts before the melting of uh, the filler metal or electrode metal. Uh, to melt the base metal first, uh, heat must be supplied at the rate higher um, than the rate at which it can be transferred uh, through the base metal away from the fine surfaces. Mm, uh, then only there will be rise in temperature of the fine surfaces up to the melting point. If heat is uh, supplied at a rate higher than the rate at which it is transferred away from the fine surfaces. Uh, in transferring the heat away from the fine surfaces, thermal conductivity of the base metal significantly affects uh, the melting point of uh, uh, significantly affects the time needed for melting of the base metal. Uh, higher the thermal conductivity, longer the time required for uh, bringing the base metal to the molten condition. If we see uh, the comparison of the thermal conductivities of the, some of the metals of the commercial importance with respect to the copper uh, thermal conductivity of other metals. In, in descending order can be given as that of aluminum, steel and lead. On the uh, scale of 100, cop if copper is given 100 rating, then aluminum is given around 62 and steel 14 and lead 8. Uh, higher the uh, thermal conductivity, longer will be the time required to bring the fine surfaces in molten condition. and. Uh, um, greater will be the heat input required uh, to melt the, the things. Uh, it shows that heat must be supplied uh, at the rate higher, at a higher rate for welding for the copper than mm, the aluminum under the identical uh, uh, dimensional parameters of the workpiece. Um, because uh, the copper having higher thermal conductivity will be transferring away the heat being supplied rapidly from the fine surfaces compared to that of aluminum and the steel and that is why heat must be supplied at a higher rate for welding of the copper compared to that for aluminum, uh, steel and lead etc. Melting of the base metal is influenced by a number of factors some of them are like this it is melting point temperature and the variation in thermal conductivity of the metal with the rise in temperature. In general, thermal conductivity of the most of the metals decreases with the increase in um, temperature and that is why the preheating of the base metal leads to the reduced thermal conductivity which in turn causes the greater uh, concentration of the heat. Uh, and uh, which leads to the reduced heat input required from the heat source for melting of the base metal during the welding. So, the preheating uh, helps to uh, bring the fine surfaces in molten condition 
because preheating uh, lowers the thermal conductivity of the waste metal. There are number of factors affecting the heat input required for welding. Uh, the parameters uh, which are uh, affecting the melting of the base metal are uh, like dimensional parameters, uh, dimensions of the parent metal like thickness, greater the thickness, um, higher the heat input required for the welding process because heat is transferred rapidly away from the wing surfaces. The thermal conductivity is the another important parameter affecting the heat input. High thermal conductivity as we have explained, uh, as I have explained earlier, higher the thermal conductivity of uh, metal to be welded, higher will the heat input required. Uh, then preheat temperature of the waste metal, uh, higher preheat temperature is used uh, for the welding process, then it lowers the heat input required. Uh, for welding. Uh, the melting of the waste metal, uh, it is obvious that higher melting point will help to, uh, uh, will need uh, higher melting point metals will require greater heat input compared to the low melting point metals. Uh, the electrode angle with respect to the welding direction, the um, angular position of the electrode during the uh, welding. Uh, affects the distribution of the heat um, uh, near the, the weld pool. If the electrode is uh, in is um, angled in such a way that it is uh, pointed towards the direction of the welding, then it uh, helps to uh, reduce the heat input required for the welding because. Uh, the pointing of the electrode to the direction of the welding helps to preheat uh, the base metal and that in turn uh, lowers the heat input required for uh, the welding. And the rate of the heat input, higher is the rate of heat input, lower will be the heat, uh, heat uh, amount, uh, amount of the heat required for the welding purpose. The other factors affecting the heat input like uh, mm, the energy necessary for melting uh, directly depends on the type of the base metal. Say for a steel it is 700 joule per gram like this, it may be different for the different metals. So, the amount of the heat uh, in terms of the joule required for uh, melting depends on the type of the base metal to be welded. Since arc uses electrical energy which is converted into the heat, so the power of the arc can be calculated, can be used to calculate the energy being supplied in arc welding for melting of the base metal. And the power of the arc is given by the product of V into I that is the arc voltage and arc current, so is the rate at which energy is supplied in welding. Uh, then heat input can be calculated in terms of uh, the watt or joules per second, both are equal in magnitude. So, the product of the arc voltage and the welding current shows the number of joules of energy being supplied per second. And here we will see, uh, since the welding torch uh, oblique arc moves at a certain speed, say in terms of mm per second. So, the heat input uh, in the arc welding uh, is calculated from the heat input per unit uh, distance and uh, the heat input, uh, net heat input is calculated um, using the welding current uh, in amperes uh, multiplied by arc voltage in volts divide by welding speed as in mm per second. So, the heat input in kilojoule per mm, net heat input in kilojoule per mm is expressed as uh, the V i into V into i divided by S into 1000. Applications of the welding are very wide and, and used in variety of the areas. The specific areas, uh, a specific area wise there are a few welding processes which are most commonly used like in automobile 
resistance welding processes are very common in rail joints for producing the rail joints in railways thermite welding is used in aerospace and nuclear reactors mostly TIG welding is used because it is able to produce the reliable more reliable weld joints. In the shift work where heavy sections are to be welded some much dark welding is commonly used. Joining of the metals uh, which are sensitive to the atmospheric gases like stainless steel, aluminum and the magnesium, the metal inert gas welding process or gas metal arc welding process is commonly used. Other applications uh, are like this. Initially, uh, the welding processes at the time of their developments could not get their place in the production except for repair welding. However, at the later stages these uh, found proper place in manufacturing and production. Presently welding is used in fabrication of the pressure vessels, bridges, building structures, aircraft, spacecraft, railway coaches and the general applications. It is also being used in ship building, automobile, electrical, electronic and defense industry and laying of the pipelines, railway tracks and in the nuclear installations. The welding is vastly used in construction of the transport tankers for transporting the oils, water and milk. The welding tubes, pipes, chains, LPG cylinders and other items, uh, the steel furnitures, gates, doors, door frames and the bodies, uh, the white good items such as uh, the refrigerators, washing machines, microwave ovens and many other items of the general applications. The welding is used extensively in uh, the fabrication of the pressure vessels. Uh, Pressure vessels is one of uh, one of the first major use of the welding. They started in the fabrication of the pressure vessels, and welding made considerable increase in operating temperatures and pressures uh, compared to the riveted uh, pressure vessels. And uh, because of these two regions, uh, the welding is extensively used in pressure vessels. This figure shows and that uh, the, the heavy pressure vessels joined by the welding process and that inspector is testing the quality of the joint produced. Uh, the welding is also used in construction of the bridges. The early use of the welding in bridge construction uh, took place in the Australia and this was done due to the problems in transporting the complete riveted spans or heavy riveted machine, riveting machines necessary for fabrication of on site um, to the remote areas. The first of all the welded bridge was erected in UK in 1934 and since then all uh, welded bridges are erected very commonly uh, and successfully. Uh, this diagram typically is uh, a welded uh, bridge uh, shows this diagram shows the welded uh, bridge. The welding is also used in construction of the ships. The ships uh, were produced earlier by riveting. Uh, over 10 million rivets were used in in uh, Queen Mary ship, which required a skill and ma skills and massive organization for riveting. But welding would have allowed the semi-skilled and unskilled labor, and uh, the principle of the prefabrications. The welding found its place in ship welding around 1920 and presently all welded ships are widely used. Uh, similarly, submarines are also produced by welding. Uh, welding is also used in building structures. Arc welding is used for construction of the steel building leading to the considerable saving in steel and money. In addition to the building huge structures such as steel towers also require welding for fabrication. Transport industry also uses welding extensively in aerospace. Air, uh, aircraft and uh, 
Spacecrafts both use welding significantly similar to the ships aircrafts were produced by riveting in early days, but with the introduction of the jet engines welding is widely used for uh, aircraft structures and for joining of the skin seat to the body. The space vehicles which have to encounter frictional heat as well as low temperatures require outer skin and other parts of the special material. These materials are welded with the full success for achieving safety and reliability. And these are the some of the typical components used in a spacecraft industry produced by the welding process. Uh, the welding is also used in, in, the div in construction of the different uh, components of the surface transport industry. Like in railways, the railway uses the welding extensively for fabrication of the coaches, wagons, uh, wheel tires, lying of the new railway tracks by mobile flash welding machines and repair of the cracked damaged tracks by thermite welding. And in the automobiles, production of the automobile components like chassis, body and its structure, fuel tank and joining of the door hinges requires welding. And this diagram typically shows that spot welding machines are being used for joining the body parts of a car. In electrical industry, the welding is also used significantly starting from the generation to the distribution and utilization of the electrical energy. Welding plays an important role. Uh, components of both hydro, steam, power generation systems such as pan stocks, water control gates, condensers, electrical transmission towers, distribution system equipments are fabricated by welding. Turbine blades and cooling fins are also joined by welding. Uh, in the electronic industry, uh, welding is also used significantly nowadays. Uh, electronic industry uses welding to uh, a limited extent for joining of the leads of the special transistors, but other joining processes such as brazing, soldering are widely being used. Uh, the soldering is used for joining components to the printed circuit board PCBs and robotic soldering is very common for joining of the parts to the printed circuit boards of the computers, televisions, communication equipments and other control uh, equipments. And uh, this was the typical diagram of uh, the ultra, uh, ultrasonically welded ultrasonically joined electronic uh, component and uh, this is, is the PCB uh, which is uh, uh, joined by the soldering process. The advantages of uh, the welding of, uh, process we will see now. The main advantages of the welding processes are given below. Uh, the joint produced is a permanent one which becomes an integral part of the work piece and the joint uh, can be stronger than the base metal if the good quality filler metal is used and uh, the uh, economical method welding is very economical method for joining the components and uh, the welding process is not restricted to the factory environment. Uh, the system can be taken to the on site also. The major limitations of the welding processes uh, are such as labor cost is high because uh, mainly skilled persons can produce the reliable weld joints and uh, the it produces the permanent joint which uh, creates problem in disassembling if required and uh, hazardous fumes and vapors are generated to uh, during the welding. So, that is harmful for the health of the uh, workers and uh, the joint itself is considered as a defect and that leads to its poor reliability and therefore, uh, welding is uh, not uh, 
preferred for uh, the critical applications. Now, I shall summarize uh, this lecture. This was the first lecture uh, uh, on the introduction of the welding processes and you have seen the various aspects related to the welding like the, uh, the power density aspects uh, and uh, the applications of the welding processes. Now, uh, this is a first lecture of a 12 lecture series based on the welding. Now, in, 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 in the next uh, few lectures, you will see the, um, the welding process classification and the various technical uh, aspects and the principles of the specific welding processes. Thank you for patience hearing. Thank you.